Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. We'll have a look at some of the main stories that have caught my attention in the press today. And we'll also take a look at some comments that have been left on the channel in recent times by viewers. Before I begin, a big thanks to all of the people that have supported the channel in recent times, whether it's through the Super Thanks option on YouTube, people that have bought me a coffee, longer term supporters on Patreon, and also a big thanks to the new channel members on this YouTube. YouTube channel. Thank you very much for that support. Links in the description below if you want to support the channel. Now, straight into the news. And another scamming ring and the people behind this scamming ring have been busted by the civil guard. And as we can read here, more than 100 people arrested for swindling nearly 1 million euros with the child in distress method throughout Spain. The Guardia Civil has arrested 102 people throughout Spain who have been accused of defrauding 238 victims victims of more than 850,000 euros through the fraud known as Hijo in Apudos, Child in Distress, in which they pretended to be a child with an urgent request for money and from whom they received bank transfers ranging from 800 to 55,000 euros. The first complaints were received at the end of 2022 in the province of Alicante. In them, the victims had reported that the perpetrators had managed to swindle them out of large sums of money by pretending to be a relative and being in a complicated situation and needing money immediately. So there we go, the civil guard on the case arresting more than 100 people for this fraud. Basically, what was happening here is that you would get a text message from somebody claiming to be a close relative of yours, normally a child. They would say that they were in some type of bother and hit you up for money. And as we saw in that article, some 238 people fell for this scam. So the moral of the story here, be wary of SMSs from numbers that you don't know. Second piece of news now, and another bank merger here in Spain appears to be on the cards between two of the biggest banks in the country. And the two banks, BBVA and Sabadell, would create a giant with more than 1 trillion euros in assets. Should a potential merger between BBVA and Sabadell come to fruition, it would create a banking giant with a perimeter of assets that would exceed 1 trillion euros. Between the two entities, they would have almost 600 billion in deposits, close to 500 160 billion in loans to customers, combined annual income of close to 40 billion, and a net profit of some 10 billion euros. In Spain alone, the value of their assets would exceed 640 billion. The combined market share would be close to 22.5%, according to Elantra analysts, who estimate potential savings of 1 billion euros from the transaction. So there we go, two more banks here in Spain considering a merger BBVA, which is one of the bigger banks in the country country and also Banco Sabadell. And I believe, but correct me if I'm wrong, that Banco Sabadell also owns a bank in the UK. So it could affect some people there, this potential merger between these two banks. And let's be honest, if these two banks do end up merging, there won't be much competition in the banking sector in Spain anymore. Now today, the 1st of May is International Workers Day or Labor Day, it's called in some places. And it's a day where a person's hard work throughout the year is recognized and celebrated. Here in Spain, unfortunately, as we know, there is a high unemployment rate. Around 12.5% of the active population doesn't have a job. But believe it or not, there are some parts of Spain that have virtually no unemployment at all. And as we can read here, the Spain that does not know what unemployment is. Everyone I know has a job. I don't know anyone who is unemployed. This is the answer of many of the residents of Poly in Mallorca when asked if anyone in their environment is one of the 243 unemployed registered in March in a town of more than 17,000 inhabitants that, thanks to tourism, one more year will suffer the lack of labour in the high season. There are restaurants that have excess workers right now because they are afraid that they won't be able to find people later on and they will be understaffed. So they have already taken them on now and they are going to try to keep them all season, says Mark Thurda a waiter in a local restaurant to TVE. 
Poyenza, like most of the municipalities of the Balearic Islands, lives mainly from tourism and those 243 unemployed are an anomaly, just 2.3% of its workforce, so it can be said that it enjoys full employment. So an exception to the norm is that town in the Balearic Islands, Poyenza, with virtually no unemployment at all, only 243 people out of a town of 17,000. Most of the jobs there relate to tourism of course but people take what they can get and keeping on the topic of jobs and the job market here in Spain because it is as I said before International Workers Day according to this article foreign workers do the dirty work in Spain the vast majority of foreigners arriving in Spain do not have a university education and end up in low skilled jobs this is what the Bank of Spain shows in its 2023 annual report in the institution's analysis of the capacity of migratory flows to prevent the aging process in Spain and to resolve the mismatches that could arise in the labour market, the supervisor states that immigrants arriving in our country are, on average, younger than nationals. In the labour market in recent years, foreign workers have contributed to reducing, at least in part, the mismatches between labour supply and demand that have been observed in certain occupations. So fairly clear from that article and the Bank of Spain report that the vast majority of foreigners that arrive in this country looking for work don't have university degrees and end up in low skilled jobs or in other words the dirty jobs that locals here don't want to do but let's be honest no point coming here with a university degree and trying to get a decent job because nobody is going to give you a job over an educated Spaniard. And that's just the way it is here for now. Now let's have a look at some comments that have been left on the channel recently. One here from user, maintaining pensions. The media used to say that a lot here in England. Haven't heard it in quite a while because now they talk about raising the pension age. Same excuses, different country. Yeah, user, thanks for the comment, and I think you'll find that the majority of countries here in Europe suffer from exactly the same problems, especially when it comes to an aging population and a pension system that looks as though it's going to go bust. And I think there's talk in many countries, not only the UK, of raising the age of retirement and the age that you can access your pension. So different countries, but same problems. One here from user, avocado oil is very healthy and has no taste. Good for cooking. Why don't consumers switch. I know they grow avocados in Spain. Is that not an option? If demand for olive oil went down, I bet prices would go down as well. It's called supply and demand or economics 101. Yeah, user, thanks for the comment and thanks for the economics lesson. And thanks for explaining that difficult concept to understand of supply and demand. I never knew that if demand for a product went down, prices would come down as well. Amazing. And when it comes to the vast majority of people here in Spain switching from olive oil to another type of oil, good luck with that. One here from Stevo. I don't see any difference between a tourist tax and a tax on overnight hotel stays. Yes, Stevo, thanks for the comment. And you're right. I don't think there is much difference between those two things, perhaps semantically, but in reality, not much difference. We saw this in yesterday's live stream that the government down there in the Canary Islands is ruling out a specific tourist tax, but they say that they want to increase the tax on overnight stays in hotels and other types of accommodation. So what's the difference? I've got no idea, and it appears that Stevo has no idea either, but if anybody has any idea of what's going on down there in the Canary Islands as far as a tourist tax is concerned, please let us know in the comment section below. One here from David, you were talking about corrupt politicians in the UK. Whilst one or two of them are not quite as honest as they should be, I cannot recall any successful convictions. Yeah, David, thanks for the comment. And this is also something that we saw in yesterday's live stream. Somebody said that if you think corruption in Spain is bad, you should come to the UK. And I said that in my opinion, corruption in other countries, the UK, for example, is a little bit more sophisticated than the corruption that goes on here. Here, it seems to be a real low level type of corruption, or at least that's my perception of the corruption here. And many politicians do end up in jail and corruption scandals seem to dominate the press here no matter which political party is in power. But as I said, that's just my perception, but let me know what your perception is of corruption in both countries in the comment section below. One here from Bob, does anyone know a politician who gets into power who does not promise to stop corruption and sort out the mess left by the outgoing administration? Yeah, Bob, thanks for the comment and the question, and the simple answer is 
No, the majority of politicians come to power promising to stamp out the corruption that was rife in the previous government or governments, and then they seem to get caught up in their own corruption scandals and fall on their own sword. And unfortunately for us, this seems to happen time after time after time. And the final comment here from Gary, hi Stu, Spain does indeed import some olive oil. For example, if you look at the bottle of some types of Carbonell olive oil, it says that it is a a mix of oil from both Spain and outside the EU. Yeah, Gary, thanks for the comment. And this is a topic that we have been speaking a lot about on the channel in recent times, the topic of olive oil. I got a comment a couple of weeks ago asking me if you can buy foreign olive oil here in Spain, foreign bottles of olive oil, like for example, in Australia, if you go to a supermarket, you'll see olive oil from Spain, you'll see olive oil from Italy, and you'll see olive oil from Greece. But here in Spain on supermarket shelves, I have never seen foreign bottles of oil. However, as Gary points out, the oil inside the bottle might be from outside the EU or from another European Union country, but the companies that then bottle that olive oil and put it onto supermarket shelves seem to be all based here in Spain. Or at least that's what I've seen every time I go to the supermarket here, but the next time I go, I'll look into it a little bit further. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. If you have any Anything to add to the conversation today, the comment section is the place for you. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.